scenarios. I spoke to you yesterday during your panel about gaming, and mm -hmm. we spoke about that. But in terms of live action, um, the rumor with the Neon Genesis of Galleon film, is that kind of like the direction you're thinking of taking ADV? Kind well, of that's just one thing. I mean, the, the whole live action uh, Neon Genesis film is something that was kind of a logical growth. Uh, it's a huge property that's made over $2 billion worldwide. Uh, the motion picture industry is looking for franchises. Ava was something that was a very obvious thing to look at in adapting to a live action film. Yeah, it's not a rumor, we're working on it right now. We've got production people working on obviously what it did, production designs, it's going to happen. The only question is, is it gonna happen this year, next year, or the year after that? Back in 2003, The Bride will be making her debut in Kill Bill Volume 1. Neo will struggle against the Matrix in Reloaded, we will all join the misadventures of one Captain Jack Sparrow, and meanwhile in Japan the first episode of Full Metal Alchemist will be aired. But if something will make 2003 a year to remember at the movies, that will be The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. The final entry of Peter Jackson's masterpiece, based on Tolkien's novels that tells the story of Gandalf, Aragorn, Frodo and Sam on their journey to the Mount Doom with the Ring, the One Ring. The film went to win Best Picture, Best Director, and other 473 awards overall. But makes sense, what the Lord of the Rings have to do with Evangelion? Well, actually a lot. You see my friend, from all of the awards that the Lord of the Rings won that year, the most relevant to Evangelion was actually one that the film did not receive an Oscar for, and that was best makeup. In other words, these guys. I'm Richard Taylor and I run the Wicker Workshop here in Wellington, New Zealand. We've spent the last six years working on Lord of the Rings, then had the great opportunity to do some design work uh, on Evangelion. I'm Ben Wooden. Um, I've had the pleasure of actually heading up the design team for Evangelion and um, man, what a great difference from Lord of the Rings to, to move into something as iconic um, for a huge audience space, but such a different uh, level of imagery and style to it. So for us, it's been um, the start of another great adventure. Truly wonderful. In May 2003, ADB officially announced in the Cannes Film Festival the live-action movie version of Neon Genesis Evangelion, in which would also participate the licensed owners Gainax and our friends from The Lord of the Rings, the VETA Workshop. Our friends from Beta will release the first concept arts for the film in 2004. They went to show a reimagined EVA units, with heavy emphasis on being more of a creature than a robot, which goes even further than the original material. I personally like this approach to the units, it's more realistic and lore accurate. But there was a major problem with this set of pictures. Look at this image, pretty cool right? Look at it again and try to find a problem with it. Did you find a problem yet? This concept art was not for Tokyo 3, was actually for a post-apocalyptic version of New York City named New City. And oh boy things got worse. Not more central dogma, but nerve control center. No more RCL, but liquid chamber. And uh, main tower? What the heck is a main tower? Well, they might be minor things, we all know that what is really important for us Evangelion fans is to follow the adventures of Rai, Kate Rose, and my favorite, Susan Whitnall, to fight the almighty Cube Angel? Mm, yeah. Hollywood did what Hollywood does best. The infamous loosely based concept was intended to be used for a live action Evangelion movie. And of course, EVA fans at the time were angry. They were ranting all over the internet. Even petitions were posted to stop the Evangelion live-action movie becoming too westernized, achieving 4,100 signatures. To the point that in 2005, John Ledford, CEO of ADV at the time, had to admit to CNN that even Evangelion fans within the company were complaining to VETA Workshop leading VETA to actually have to be in contact with these Evangelion lore keepers, at least twice a week. Taylor even admitted that for every email he would get from a Lord of the Rings fan, he would get 25 from Evangelion fans. Did you hear that, dear audience? The fighting for the purity of the original material is dated since immemorial times. 
we always been like that, even between EVA fans, because we all know that the message of our Lord and Savior Ide Keanu will not stand different perspectives, that is, sacrilege. And as Taylor pointed out, Evangelion live-action production was a still a whisper. Could you imagine if this material would have come a reality? It would have been hell to pay. Taylor also highlighted that half of the budget was already raised to begin the production of the film. A budget that was set anywhere between $100 to $120 million. So you must be wondering, was $120 million enough to do this kind of film? Well, the first Transformers movie had an estimated budget of between $150 and $200 million in 2007. So the answer is no, but it would have been a start. By early 2006, fans started to make predictions based on the information they had. Some were pretty accurate. For example, that 20th Century Fox and DreamWorks were interested in the production of the movie. And that Pirates of the Caribbean producer Jerry Brockenheim and director Steven Spielberg were approached with the project and showed some interest. Others, well, were more like not confirmed rumors. And because I know, my Eva fan, that you are eager to know on how the Evangelion cast could have been looked like in a live action adaptation, I will tell you who were the favorites back then. Shinji Kari would have been played by Elijah Wood. Makes sense. He was very popular at the time after the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Besides, Beta Workshop involvement would have created interest as they have worked together before. Ray, or Rai, would have been played by Shang Siji, a Chinese actress that made her American debut in 2001's Jackie Chan's Rush Hour 2. Misato Katsuragi, or Susan Whittle, would have been played by Jennifer Garner who was very popular at the time as she appeared on Ben Affleck's Daredevil. They would later marry, and then she would start 2005's Electra. Gwyneth Paltrow, Colin Farrell, and Ian McKellen were fan favorites to play Dr. Akagi, Kaji, and Fujitsugi respectively. Brian Cox would have been playing Kiel Lawrence, seal leader. Hugo Weaver, Mr. Smith from The Matrix, as Gendry Kari, and Harry Joel Osment, the kid from The Sixth Sense, would have been the favorite for Kaoru. But no character would be more controversial to cast than that stunning red-haired fan favorite and otaku's wet dream, Asuka Langley, or Rose. Now, here is where there were two favorites according to my research. The one to be considered first was without a doubt Natalie Portman. Her career was booming as she was starring on George Lucas Star Wars prequels, where she played Padme, so she was in a very good spot. Nevertheless, there's countless rumors that Hideki Anno's favorite to play the role was Emma Watson. The only works that Emma was known by at the time were the Harry Potter movies. Will have ADB and their producers being able to forge this AAA cast for the film? We will never know, as a script was never made. Therefore, it was impossible to cast all of these people without a story, and this list was never confirmed by anyone. It was just an internet fan wish list. In May 2006, Hideki Anno founded Studio Skara, and by September that year, the Rebuild Tetralogy was announced, the new theatrical edition, or Rebuild with the first movie set to be released a year later. Gainax at the time was starting to have internal problems, and Anno wanted to have more creative freedom. Many people speculated at the time that Kara was just a subsidiary for Gainax, but this was not close to be true, as Anno abandoned completely Gainax for Kara one year later, and stated at the time that it was a divorce where Shinji, Asuka, and Rei were the children. It was a legal calamity on who the owner of the Evangelion franchise was. Gainax conceded future production rights to Anno, while keeping the rights for all of the produced material paying Anno royalties for it. And because a deal was already reached with ADB, the live-action movie rights belonged to the foreign producer. Therefore, it was clear at the time that Gainax would continue to participate directly on the production of the film. But Anno would not as he left the project without writing a script. This was a major blow for the fandom. 
However, this was not going to stop ADV as by July 2007 Michael Bay's Transformers hit the theaters and was a massive box office success. Months later, Anna would release his first reveal of Evangelion movie and was also a big success. So ADV was still interested on the project, but there were some concerns about Transformers being the juggernaut that it was, sucking all of the air in the room for giant robot or mega blockbusters movies, full of CGI and mind-blowing effects, and also at the time competing against Anos movie. Once again, get to sign Neo Genesis Evangelion. What a thrill! Because uh, nothing will please me more right now if we were getting to make this into a film. It's a, uh, a sad thing that uh, it hasn't happened yet, but obviously, fingers crossed. Because uh, wouldn't it be incredible if we had a live-action film set in uh, post-apocalyptic Neo Tokyo? This movie, but uh, I have to hope and uh, please keep uh, a vocal voice so we can try and get it to happen. By 2008, our friends from Beta Workshop were still very interested on the project. Furthermore, there was major expectation for the live-action Speed Racer movie that was set to be released later that year. Speed Racer turned out to be a flop, as it did not satisfy either critical or box office expectations. The film lost almost $30 million, so this started to raise some questions if there was a market at all for anime live-action adaptations in the United States. The time was passing by and the production started to be a race against the clock, as by mid-2009 the second Transformers movie and the second Rebuild movie were released and yet again both dominated the summer box office in the respective markets. And ADB was still without a script for the now six years long project. A few months later, and being unable to sustain major losses and other financial challenges, after 11 years of being the main source for anime in the United States, ADB ceased operations. And just like that, the dream of an Evangelion live action movie vanished. Um, oh, and I have to ask about this, and you probably don't want to answer any questions about it, but you are listed as a producer on the ethereal live-action Evangelion movie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so is that just buried under a stack of papers on your desk, or what? <laughs> what it is. Um, it is. It's a lot of paperwork right now, um, but it's we're with a very big producer right now. Um, oh, there's actually uh, movement on that project? Yes. Um, <laughs> it's not only just the movement. It's very active. Um, really? Really? Wow. Yeah, the only the thing is, um, you know, Hollywood. You got to understand that, um, you know, clearing the paperwork that's required by the studios and by everyone involved. I mean, that's just that's just to have to fight. So um, once that's resolved, <laughs> I think it it would be on fast track. So we're hoping that uh, it'll it'll start moving, like uh, you know, even next year. Um, so I have to. So that begs the question, I, and I just maybe this is a leap of logic on my part, but. I have to assume you got a bit of a boost from the success of Transformers. Uh, yes, that's... but I gotta tell you, I mean, I took it around. I mean, I mean, this is after you know, um, actually, the whole uh, Weta effort uh, with you know that John made, and I spoke with Weta after that as well. I spoke with Richard Taylor and and everyone, and then I put together a package and I shopped it around town. Yes and no. It's because Evangelion is just very heady. Right, I mean, it's, it's got so many elements in it, and that really needs to be broken down to explain to Hollywood um, communities. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, studios really, you know, unless really they understand the franchise, um, unless you can sum it up in one sentence or two, it's really, really tough to kind of get them interested. So initially, it, it helped that it was a what you, what they would con- consider a giant robot project, and. You know, obviously, people will kill me if I say this is a giant robot project, um, and I, I don't consider it as one. But um, um, obviously, that's one element that helped. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, with two being that much of a hit, uh, you know, Transformers two being that, you know, being the biggest movie last year, yes, it does help. But look at how it's helping, you know, other t- other robot related titles, right? So right. it's it's a very elusive thing. Um, so. But I think right now we're with a producer and a studio that really understands um, beyond the whole, you know, mega 
impact, or I mean, the, the whole robot running, you know, destroying the city, that type of ideas. They're really looking beyond that and really looking at the drama, human elements, even to those um, elements that appeal to otaku. And they, and I'm I'm really happy about that. So I'm hoping that we we clear up all the necessary paperwork and and then uh, really move on with it. At, um, go make the movie. At the same time, we shouldn't expect the last 20 minutes to take place with uh, quick cuts of Shinji on a folding chair on top of the world. I uh, yeah, pr- probably yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <not. laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. You might have some success if you cast Shia LaBeouf as Shinji and Megan Fox as Asuka. Just throw that out there. <laughs> 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 Even if ADB ceased operations, it still existed as a legal entity, something that by 2011, Gainax allegedly refused to acknowledge. The owners of what remained from ADB were going to fight hard for the rights, and fought hard they did, as they filed a lawsuit in Texas in 2011 for those live action rights. In the lawsuit, they disclosed what were they paying for. The agreement with Gainax included to film a complete trilogy of films. Yes, no one, but three full feature movies, plus five TV shows and three direct-to-video Evangelion movies. The whole deal was massive, but Gainax was not recognizing that agreement, according to the lawsuit. This lawsuit was still going on by 2019. In the meantime, another reveal of Evangelion movie was released, and also other four Transformers movies, plus Ghost in a Shell, another major anime title, was released as live action starring Scarlett Johansson. That movie was able to make a profit, unlike Speed Racer. In 2016, however, Hideki Anno will sue Gainax for not paying his royalties. The whole thing was a mess to the point that Hideki Anno confirmed later that all, not some, but all of the Evangelion franchise belonged to him, no one else. So after 17 years of fighting, disappointments, separations, unfulfilled promises, and losses, is there even a glimpse of hope for a live-action Evangelion movie? Is there anyone left willing to embark in such of an ambitious multi-million dollar project with a demanding fan base? Well, perhaps. In June 2018, Netflix announced that they had acquired the streaming rights for the original Neon Genesis Evangelion story, Plus True and The End of Evangelion. They would redub the original dialogues, and the story to be aired was the director's cut version, not the original TV version. And of course, the fan base were angry yet again for that. The dubbing, I mean. Not to mention that they removed the iconic Fly Me to the Moon song on the end credit scenes for each episode. However, with all its problems, Netflix introduced this story to an audience of millions around the world. The Evangelion phenomena is yet again, 25 years later, a worldwide sensation. The fandom is bigger than has ever been, and this translated into Anno's Reveals films, as 3 plus 1 is one of the most anticipated films ever in anime history. But is Netflix able to produce a live-action film? That is the real question. Well, The Witcher first season was not that bad, so I decided to give a chance to their live-action adaptation for Death Note. Now, you may not know this, but the anime version of Death Note is arguably my second favorite anime adaptation of all times. It's dark, grim, smart, gruesome, and raw. I simply love it. But I was resistant to watch the Netflix adaptation for three years as the reviews were bad. Simply bad. And there is no way that the Death Note story as depicted in the source material is bad. So it had to be their interpretation. Therefore, I avoided it completely. However, for academic purposes, I decided to watch the film just before making this video. And oh boy. Oh boy. Listen, I sit for 100 minutes and watch that thing for my viewers. Because I love you all so, so much. 
So only because of that, I deserve a like on this video and also you hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already, all right? It was just, ugh. I would put it like this. Find the abomination on this picture. Did you find it yet? If you said Ryuk, you are wrong, dead wrong. The abomination is this entire freaking movie. I hated it from start to finish. They did not get light right, the whole setup is wrong, the new characters are poorly written, but hey, at least they got part of L right, and Ryu looks fine, I guess. But come on, it's simply done. Just done. They even changed the lore on the Death Note. How can you mess that up? Well, they did it. By the end, I wanted my name on the Death Note. But with so many new rules, probably I would have lived an extra 100 years. I quit on the idea of a live action adaptation for Evangelion years ago. And given the current state of Hollywood productions, I feel that they have lost all capabilities to do justice to any adaptation. The only exception would be with the Keanu directly involved in the project. Does not have to be in the role of a director, but definitely a producer overseeing that his view that has been so successful for over 25 years stays truthful in a Hollywood adaptation. I am pretty sure that big part of the fandom agree with me on that count. Besides, Transformers did kind of ruin it for everyone else on the mecha genre. So the Evangelion movies will be treated as something like the new Transformers movie by mass audiences and Western media. And I fear that the Evangelion movie will never get the fair chance that the Evangelion story deserves. Perhaps in the future, Hideki Anno and Studio Kara will be interested in doing a live action adaptation of the story. But in my opinion, will have to come directly from Japan. It is not a secret for anyone in the fandom that Anno has been working with the legendary studio Toho for years now, as they did work together in Shin Godzilla back in 2016. And both are currently working together yet again in the upcoming Shin Ultraman film. Toho has proven before that they can bring justice to a live action adaptation of an anime or manga story, and still be faithful to the source material as they did with the release of the Attack on Titan movie back in 2015. The film was acclaimed by both critics and fans. So perhaps the studio home of that cool dude named Godzilla, and several of the legendary director Akira Kurosawa works, will be up to the challenge. Someday to turn this dream into a reality. It's a way. I mean, we basically, we're doing that because it's something that's going to happen, and if we're not the ones doing it, who knows what's going to happen to it. At least we're tied in closely with Guy and Ax. They're involved. We're now involved with what are people. Everyone involved is interested in making something that's faithful to the idea of the original. Uh, as opposed to simply licensing off the name and coming back you know, three years later and like, what is that? 